hi there. Um, I'm Cody, and uh, this uh, this little guy's Tony over here. You see him? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to do a short little introductory video on um, the tarot cards and sort of what they uh, what they are and what they are not and uh, or what they might not be <laughs> um, <clears throat> and also how you can sort of use these um, and what the point of these little readings are okay so uh, I'm gonna be doing tarot readings um, for each sign for each astrological sign um, once a month uh, for every month of the year. Um, if I explore this and I find that people are really responding well to it and I want to do more readings than that, I may end up doing more readings than that. But uh, to start out with, I'm just going to do the one reading a month. And these readings are very, very general. So you should be able to uh, kind of go back to that reading and uh, try to look at it with some fresh eyes. And it should come, uh, new meanings should come out of it for you, uh, even throughout the month, you know, so... Uh, be prepared for that as well. Okay, so now, like, what is the tarot cards? What am I doing here? Um, <clears throat> well, um, let me get a good one here. Alright, here's one of my favorite cards, actually. Um, the Hanged Man here. Um, Alright, so this is a tarot card, traditional tarot card. Um, I mean, this one's not... Uh, this is Paulina Cassidy uh, designed this deck with... Uh, this artwork, which is based on the traditional Rider Waite um, meanings and artwork, uh, but it's stylized. I like the art. I think it's sort of dreamy, uh, whimsical, and it always brings my mind instantly to positivity. Um, and I don't, I don't, when I'm reading for others, I'm very careful not to let uh, negativity uh, inject into my mind. You know, um, I feel that it's important, even if I'm not necessarily voicing a negative concern or a concern in a negative way, if the thought in my mind is in a negative nature, uh, somehow the idea, when transmitted, will come off negatively, uh, if that makes sense. So um, I always control my mind and uh, try to keep it positive. And these types of cards like this um, they have a very, very kind of childlike mentality where you're not seeing things in terms of right and wrong so much as you are just uh, you're just captivated you're um, you're very interested you know um, and so the cards each have there are uh, basically two divisions of the deck there's the major arcana and the minor arcana uh, and the the major arcana such as this one uh, tell sort of more of like a vibrant story um, they revolve around a person or something like that usually um, there's some exceptions some there's the world which just kind of means full god realization and things like that um, but then you have like the four suits you have the wands the swords the cups and the uh, coins or pentacles sometimes it's called um, I like to go with coins because pentacles sounds a little bit like pentagram or something and there are a lot of Religious people that are very, uh, it's a devil word. It makes them get the heebie-jeebies. We don't want that. So, um, trying to make this as uh, religion-friendly as possible because there's no, there's no real conflict between anything in like tarot cards and uh, and a religion, except maybe on some higher theological level in some obscure religions, but not really even in, like, Christianity or anything like that. Um, first of all, this is not fortune-telling, okay? So this, well, let me just show you this card real quick. This is the Three of Swords. And so this Three, three of Swords, uh, as opposed to this, this is a minor arcana card, as opposed to the major, oh, that's also a minor arcana card, as opposed to the major arcana card, um, and the story behind the Major Arcana card has a little bit more of a deeper multi-dimensional meaning, uh, whereas the story behind the Minor Arcana card is fairly more, it's a little bit more straightforward, um, and the picture you can tell kind of by looking at it, it, it sort of embodies a heartbreak, uh, she's holding a heart there with three swords piercing through it, 
um, you know, indicating pain or, you know, solemn um, melancholy. You can see the way she's just staring into that candlelight like she's sad or he. I don't, I don't really know if this figure is male or female. Um, but then as opposed to this, you're, at first glance, it's kind of not as intuitive. You think, what's going on here? Um, but what's going on here is really um, a lot of things. Submission. Um, this is being incapable of sort of taking agency in the direction that your life is going, having to sit back and, and you know, uh, let it unfold. Uh, patience. Um, calm. Solemn. Uh, you know, uh, those all those things kind of work together. So these... They have a way of being a bit of, a bit more like describing another human in terms of another human, right? So you could say someone is very, you think of a, a person who embodies anger, you know, like uh, the god Fudo, you know, like something like that. So if a person is embodying the god Fudo, they are acting in a way that is angry and, and fire, brimstone coming out. So you get the imagery, right? So. The major arcana will refer to humans and situations in a way that is more metaphorical like this, whereas the minor arcana will refer to situations uh, in a sort of more direct way, but in a, a more vague way as well. Um, so I'm not channeling spirits here. Um, let me make that clear. Okay, so in other words, if channels or if spirits can be channeled by tarot cards, whatever that means, whatever your meaning of that is, it's not behind my intention to do that, okay? So what's simply happening here is each one of the tarot cards represents uh, an emotion or a situation that you can go through in life. And if you get the sensation when somebody's pulling these cards and talking about these situations, if you get the sensation that it's following you, that somehow it's peered into your mind, right, that you have uh, have leaked somehow into the outside world and somebody's picking up on that and they're showing it to you. Um, it's not because of spirits. It's not because of anything like that. What's simply happening is you're a very, very advanced uh, being, uh, person. You have a, a ton of life experiences. So, you know, these cards, which basically just represent emotions or situations, you've been in these situations hundreds of times over the course of your life, right? Now, sometimes those situations have a way of uh, causing trauma or something or something that we have a hard time recovering from, and they can leave scars that last a, a very long time, but mentally we might suppress them. So we forget about them. We, we don't want to remember that painful experience anymore. So what happens is, as I pull up these cards, it's almost like a Rorschach test. So you've definitely been in these situations before, but every now and then, your mind will almost by itself short circuit and get wired to think about something that you've been ignoring, to think about something that you had been saving yourself from subconsciously in a way, or you... You've been trying to spare yourself pain by realizing that something is a certain way. And it's usually something very simple, like you uh, maybe you've been a little bit unreasonable in an argument or something like that. So really, the, the cards kind of call you out on your, uh, on your BS, you know. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they uncover for you that which is in your subconscious mind. Um, now, when I say they uncover for you... I have to be careful with my wording here because my fundamental theory here is that your mind is doing all the work. So essentially, if you perceive that I'm like somehow good at this or that I'm really reading you very well, it's not that I'm actually reading you very well. It's that I am putting this in terms that are vague enough that your mind can create an attachment to them. And your mind is creating an attachment to the meaning and applying it to yourself, and then you're learning a lesson from that, okay? So that's the process. So all I'm simply doing here is making noises and sounds and giving you input. And the input is such that it is designed to possibly trigger that self-realization mechanism so that you start to turn around, uh, turn your gaze inward, and focus on yourself for just a second. And when you do that, you can notice things. You can notice things about yourself that uh, you really would have never noticed otherwise. You know, it's like looking into a mirror. 
Um, and that's where the value in it comes from. And in that way, it is very, very much like a therapy. It's almost like a mental massage, you know? Um, <clears throat> now, here's the thing. Occasionally, a person will, uh, will say, receive a message. That is, a person will get meaning that scares them, that feels uh, malicious, may possibly even, uh, or um, let's just say it causes anxiety. It, it causes your heart to race and there's a feeling of, of unease, you know. Know that that is a feeling that is coming from you for some reason reason and most likely it's simply a defense mechanism most likely whenever that happens whenever for no reason at all somebody says something and it provokes this feeling of anxiety or fear it's normally your mind uh, creating that feeling to get you to run away to not look don't look at that you know and if you actually just kind of fight that feeling and look directly at it you'll find that you'd been fooling yourself, you'd been deluding yourself, and the thing wasn't actually as scary as you thought it was in the, in the first place. And this enormous release of tension happens, um, and you feel as though you're empowered to move forward from that point on. So, in, in a sense, it's like you're pulling up the curtain and seeing, you know, the wizard underneath the curtain there uh, with all the controls, you know? And then once you see it, it doesn't really scare you anymore. Um, but it also doesn't mean that you don't have to play along anymore. You know, you can still, um, you can still basically live the life that other people expect you to live, uh, while understanding why you're doing it. You know, you're living on two levels, a level of involvement and a level of detachment, you see. And, um, that's what arts like this sort of move you toward as a, uh, a utility for self-improvement anyway. Um, so that's pretty much what we're going to aim to get out of this. Um, so in other words, um, don't, you know, if you, if you have an exceptional story or something about how these cards have like awakened you or, uh, something that you've discovered, please share that. Um, as far as actual communication, as far as like, <laughs> people interested in, in communicating with the deceased loved one or things like that. Um, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that something like that is impossible. Um, but what I am going to tell you is that it in no way is within the scope of what I'm attempting to do with these readings. Um, so if that's what you're going for, you'll probably want to seek somebody else uh, to do that type of a reading. Um, my readings are self-reflective, and they might not feel always, um, they might not always make you feel the most comfortable, okay? But they will tell you what you need to hear. Uh, they will tell you what you need to move on, you know, to, uh, to grow. And, um, I mean, other than that, that's pretty much all you need to know. Um, if you have any questions, please ask, you know, um, and I'll try to help in any way I can. Ultimately, I want to do this because I am searching for ways in which I can um, alleviate suffering. Um, medical therapies and things like that, I think, have been watered down by uh, consumerism, uh, corporatism, to a very great degree. And um, the frustration of, of navigating through all the corruption and, and um, uh, profit-centered operation it's too much for me. Um, I have to find alternative ways. Um, I'm more interested in shamanistic healing, uh, personal healing, one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you know, uh, people talk about manipulators, right? These people that you run into every now and then who uh, they'll tell you whatever you want to hear um, to get you to do something that they want you to do, okay? Well, I, I'm interested in people who can take abilities like that and uh, turn them around and use them for other people. You see what I'm saying? So 
Uh, in other words, I think that it would be great if a person like a one of these narcissist manipulators that you hear of, <laughs> if they had like an uh, empathy breakthrough and became like a psychiatrist or something, I think that they could really advance the field, right? Because they understand the other side of it. Well, so that's sort of what I'm going through right now. I'm trying to understand the other side of all these therapies. When when somebody says that like something is 15% effective, I want to know intimately what went wrong in that 15%. What was it that uh, it didn't do it for them, you know? Um, and that's what I study. That's what I'm interested in. And because of that, alternative therapies come up for me a lot. I'm very interested in uh, altered states of mind, uh, altered states of consciousness. In a way, I believe that that is the, I don't want to say end-all, be-all, but um, it's where you have the capability of doing your work. Okay, so that's your workshop, the mind. Uh, they say it's the devil's workshop in, in Christianity, right? Or the idle mind is the devil's workshop. Um, I wonder if I could kick the devil out and keep the workshop for myself, though. <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's how I look at it. Um, you can you can get into a place where the only imperative that you're following is your own true will, and if you if you get down to that place, people are afraid of that. They say, "Well, what if your will is evil?" I have never encountered that. Um, evil seems to be purely illusory. You know, um, but that's a good thing. It's a good thing that it's there because it drives us forward. It drives us into thinking that there's something we need to save ourselves from. You know, um, but in reality, all that is doing is is pushing forward, uh, pushing forward the process of evolution, pushing forward uh, personable accountability, all these sorts of things uh, that are good things for the world if the world is trying to continue, which it appears that it is. Uh, so. That's pretty much all this is. Uh, it's just therapy. <laughs> um, all it is is a Rorschach, uh, an ink blot. You know, you should look into the meanings of these cards and find ways in which it applies to you. Um, I'm not giving you any answers. The answers are coming from inside you. See, and it's your mind that puts together the pieces. And I'm just giving you pieces, you know, and saying, here, put them together. But uh, anyway, I look forward to the readings and. Um, uh, we'll, we'll see about personal readings and things like that. My time is kind of limited, but, um, you know, I, I, my, my goal is to help people. And if I can do that through any means necessary, you know, so, uh, anyway, uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful year. Uh, this is January. I think it's the third right now. So, uh, we're starting out pretty strong and I uh, hope to see you all soon. Bye-bye.